Hi, Phelan. Hello. Ready for some Charmed Rewind? Yeah. And a weird transitionary episode of Charmed. This was a very weird episode. Honestly, I did not recall <laughs> the episode until um, I started looking deeper into the summary of it. I didn't remember Prue turning into a dog or any of that stuff. So, uh, yeah, once I started kind of remembering the main portion of it. Yeah, we had a double transformation this episode. Yeah, I remembered the other half of it <laughs> for sure. Yeah, so uh, we did another uh poll on patreon and it was a number generator again it landed on season three episode 21 look who's barking <laughs> look who's barking not look who's barking now look who's barking too t-o-o <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> maybe there would have been sequel episodes uh yeah this is a super weird episode it is right before the uh the last episode of season three which shannon doherty directed and um, that's why she's not in this for the most part. That's why she was turned into a dog for most of it. It's really just sort of a, a plot element that could have been in it or not in it. They could have written the story easily around not that. Yeah. Yeah. She's getting ready to, to direct what uh, ultimately was her swan song. So <laughs> direct and get out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was only one of two women that directed the show wasn't it or just a handful is it that few i feel like there was an article and we talked about this before where uh rose mcgowan talked about how little like how few female directors they had and how many in her time were there uh this was before her time so shannon doherty was obviously one of them as well but yeah not very many <laughs> mm. <laughs> naked woman Anyway, uh, I think a lot of people, when they were voting for this one, and there were ones on the poll, uh, including like uh, multiple arms Piper <laughs> and stuff like that. I think a lot of people were expecting Air Bud. And I just want to say, maybe like lower your expectations a little bit. <laughs> There's no rule that says a dog can't be a witch. Yeah. <laughs> It's a bit of a lie to say this is the Prue turns into a dog episode, even calling it Look Who's Barking, because it really, like, the main yeah. focus is is Phoebe's story. It's really. all about Phoebe, like usual. Half the it's series. All about me. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> half of the charm. It's like, it's all about me. Feed yeah. me. <laughs> uh, maybe people will be excited about that, though. They get a, a Phoebe Cole episode. Yeah. <laughs> they seem to like that. <laughs> when we talk about those. It's a preview of things to come for. BB regarding Cole in this episode. Yeah, this is um so this is deep into the the Cole stuff, but before it got super obnoxious, they were still kind of doing the the angel buffy kind of thing with it, um angelus type stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh so at this point in time, he has uh, killed a witch under some sort of spell. I do not recall how exactly this played out, but some other demon used him as a pawn to try and drive them apart. He's still fighting yeah. his demonic side, riding the line between good and evil. If we're going by, like, <laughs> that, like, makes him irredeemable, letting a witch die, like, how many witches do the Charmed Ones get killed through the course of this series? They kill a witch in this episode, so... <laughs> yep. <laughs> she just became a banshee, but it was a witch, so... <laughs> mm -hmm. They're never very worried about saving people that aren't someone that is, like, directly close to them in some way. Yeah. Do something! Do it! So that's, I guess, the storyline going around. At this point, they're off on the relationship because of the whole killing a witch thing. Phoebe wasn't into that. Mm -hmm. So she's feeling depressed about it. It's at the point where she cares at all, I guess, still about that kind of thing. But you see, yeah. that'll be leaving her character soon. Like, she can't. Yeah, the... <laughs> it's just not place in her heart for people that aren't named Phoebe. I think, I mean, this, uh, like I said, this isn't the point where it was insufferable. They're still just sort of like, who's good? Yeah. Who's evil? How, can I redeem him? Can I fix him? Can you really ignore the call of your heart? That kind of thing, which no. can be done in some sort of way. But there are some goofy elements to it in this episode. Yeah, it's weird. because like you see the, uh, the charm that the show started as is still sort of there. But mm -hmm. the elements of later Charmed are creeping in at this point. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're sliding into season four, and that's when the coup hits the fan, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Anyway, you ready to go right into the episode? Yep. All right. The very first shot, and I was so excited we got to this iconic. <laughs> this is Phoebe putting together her scrapbook on Cole. Yeah. In the Book of Shadows. Oh, she's just shitting up the Book of Shadows like this. Like, you know, it's, this matches nothing else in the Book of Shadows. Whenever they no. look through the Book of Shadows, it's hand-drawn, this kind of old-style calligraphy. It looks pretty uniform, honestly, for something that supposedly, like, <laughs> their ancestors, like, kept contributing to, and it's been kind of a work in progress. But what Phoebe is doing here is... She has photos of her and Cole from like a photo booth, mm -hmm. <laughs> like goofing together. And she glues it down next to this hilarious photo of Julian McMahon that was clearly yeah. not intended for <laughs> the show. No, it's just some promo shot or something of him leaning on his hand with a big smile. <laughs> like, uh. <laughs> yeah, he's like in a park somewhere, like leaning on his hand. Like it looks like a Sears photo or something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it I looks like a photo that might come with a frame. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's it's so goofy looking. And just imagining Phoebe taking these photos or them taking these photos together at any point in their relationship. Can you imagine? Because he was like, he he was a lawyer who was an undercover demon to get them and then decided to go to the side of good. Can you see him and Phoebe hanging out in a photo booth making kissy faces? <laughs> Him laying in the grass like, oh shucks. Yeah. <laughs> did they get a professional photographer to do it? Or did they get um Prue to do it? She's a photographer. Yeah. <laughs> she took them Hire for Prue for, for this. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, alright, weirdos. <laughs> Glad the penultimate Prue episode is a dog. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> what a great way to go out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she's shitting up the Book of Shadows with, first of all, I don't know why there's this random blank page that she can work with in the middle of it anyway, next to the Balthazar page. Yeah, and like, why? I was confused about the layout of the Book of Shadow multiple times in this episode, because you see her, she has it open, and it's like around the middle of it. I'm like, Balthazar or Cole, pick one. It's either labeled under one of those if this... Book of Shadows is organized at all, which apparently it's not. No, because, but... <laughs> well, I mean, they people just add to it at random, right? I guess they don't really have an organization. Yeah, how do you find anything in the stupid book? <laughs> I thought they would magic it in and, like, okay, if you want to say, like, it makes sense that this is towards the middle, like, if that's where it was supposed to be, which still doesn't make sense, you can magic the page that you're adding to be, you know, in the right order or something alphabetically. But this isn't even alphabetical. What we see in this episode, the Book of Shadows is just a hodgepodge mess. <laughs> it's yeah, like, we, <laughs> you, you we can't to... begin to understand their filing system, honestly. No. <laughs> it's idiotic. <laughs> I would love it if they had more just stupid little scrapbook pages with shit glued in and like little stars and stickers. And like, <laughs> yeah. My day with Cole. <laughs> and we see what she wrote about him in there. Yeah. Oh, it was so funny. <laughs> it's about him being ticklish and great in bed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. We'll get to that in a second. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, it, I just want to point out what all she's she's doing um, that we can see at the moment. Um, So she has written above this picture of Cole. Cole's human form in shitty Sharpie, terrible handwriting. Not Balthazar's human form. Cole's human form. Yeah. That's not the, the right wording there, Phoebe. <laughs> No, like this is, and this is right next to the Balthazar page, so mm -hmm. pretty bad all around. Um, she's also wearing like a weird ass top. This is like, there's a lot of early 2000s fashion in this that looks terrible with like these like rose sleeves, like little roses are on it. Mm -hmm. It looks bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Prue comes inside from uh, yet another arduous date, I guess. Every time she's like, oh, I was just on a date. It was such work. <laughs> Uh, Phoebe asks why she didn't invite him in, uh, and she's like, well, I'm single again, so I need to live vicariously through you. And Prue's like, yeah, well, you don't want to live my love life. It's been rated PG lately for pretty grim. <laughs> I'm sure Prue did not want her date to meet Phoebe. <laughs> no, you don't want to meet my horrible sisters. No. <laughs> She'll just be like, cow, cow, cow. Piper, praying 
try and blow him up. <laughs> Phoebe starts to give her love advice already it's seeping in. Yeah. And um she's like, You need to stop waiting for Mr. Wright. That's why none of your relationships are working out. You just have too high expectations. <laughs> why can't you settle? Do what I do. Just date any demon that comes around. Yeah. <laughs> settle. She takes a break from that to uh, draw an arrow from Cole's human form to his seer's portrait, just in case you didn't know what yeah. that referred to. <laughs> he thinks you're as dumb as she is. Either that or she's like trying to work the YouTube algorithm, put arrows pointlessly on there. Yeah, and just like a picture of her cut out going, oh, it's like yeah. a big face, <laughs> shocked. Cole's human form, <laughs> you won't believe it. And then like a little emoji, like making like a stink face or like a barf face. <laughs> <laughs> so Prue reads more of Phoebe's wonderful entry on Cole. We get to read the whole thing in a bit. But uh, what she reads is, Cole likes walks in the park, jazz and fine wine. <laughs> Did we see any of this on the show? Did we see him liking jazz and walks in the park and fine wine? I don't think. <laughs> I guess he likes walking in the park, falling down in the grass, and leaning on his hand and taking pictures. Tee hee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that cool. Uh, Prue's like, so what the hell are you doing, man? <laughs> Like, what is this? And Phoebe's like, wow, this is going to prepare future witches against him. <laughs> they know he's into jazz and fine wine. Uh, oh, how do we get this guy? Oh, he's great in bed. That's how we'll get him. That's how we'll get him. <laughs> this is really helpful. Can you imagine if all the other entries were like that? Clearly, like, there were some personal issues going on between so-and-so and the hawker demon or whatever. The really? hawker demon likes to le leave his towel on the floor after a shower. He leaves the it. toilet seat up. <laughs> just BB. He doesn't just call like, you back. <laughs> uh, can't these witches be more professional as she, like, gets her glue stick out, putting in more ex-boyfriends <laughs> and wronged her? <laughs> This is page six on the hawker demon. I don't think this is helping us to vanquish him. <laughs> uh, they hear an explosion and uh, Piper is hiding in the basement. Uh, this is after she has just developed her exploding powers. So she isn't really dealing with this very well. She can't control it. So she's been hiding from them the whole time. Ruin their Christmas decorations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe that's why we never see them do a Christmas episode. <laughs> mm, okay. I think it's the last time we see these Christmas decorations, too, so she, I guess she blows them all up by the end. She doesn't like um, any remnants of Christ in their house <laughs> as the Antichrist. <laughs> Remember, she's worried about going into that church. Mm -hmm, That's yeah. the real reason why. Mm -hmm. If she went in later seasons, she just melts immediately. <laughs> They hear some barking outside, and Prue's like, Geez, who let the dogs out? <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised this episode wasn't called something like Who Let the Prue Out or something like that. Really, though? They, instead of doing a Who Let the Dogs Out reference, they went with a Look Who's Talking reference. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of a lateral move? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Even though the dog doesn't... Talk. I guess barking is accurate, but it's not like she talks as a dog. Mm -hmm. It'd be kind of funny, though, if she did, like, you know, doghouse style, just, like, barked, and then, <laughs> and then <laughs> Prue's voice would come out. She just goes, like, oh, I have to poop. Let me out. <laughs> Prue can talk. Prue can talk. Believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Prue. That's basically what they do in this episode. We can't they really do. joke. Like, there's no joke we can make that doesn't happen in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> she does shit in this episode. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, Phoebe's like, Piper, you can't keep hiding out. You got a club to run. You have a husband that can't live without you. And Prue's like, yeah, plus you got to, like, cook for us. <laughs> <laughs> Piper says, I got a husband who can't live with me either. <laughs> 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 She cooks for them, so she gave up her dream of being a chef, opened a club with them, and on top of that, she has to cook for them? It's okay, she'll remember she wanted to be a chef in the finale. 
<laughs> Cook your own meals, Prue. <laughs> um, another thing that um, I'm surprised they remembered this far into the show, Kit is around, their cat. Yeah, it's surprising to see Kit again. I thought the cat had died by that point. Maybe not? Yeah. No. I mean, you see the cat more than just that weird uh, superimposed one they use a lot later of the cat just, like, put into the hall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess they had a cat there. I mean, I wasn't sure if maybe they just got another cat for that shot, but, like, they could have done the whole time, but... Yeah. I guess this was when it was still around. Uh, Kit is running inside because of uh, all the dogs. We also get a Kit POV shot. Like a POV of the cat running through the kitchen because it's much easier than training a cat to run through a scene. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, all the dogs in the neighborhood are just going crazy. We cut to a man looking at a photo album and crying. His pug is barking. Presumably he also has his own book of shadows where he's putting his uh, demon wife in there with a seer's portrait <laughs> to yeah. warn other witches about her. It looked exactly the same as the book of shadows from this episode. <laughs> uh, the room starts to shake and uh, his thousand vases start exploding. He has so many vases in that house. It was his prize collection. <laughs> one after the other just psh, 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 all over the place like how many he had nothing to live for after that which is lucky because he dies shortly after yeah <laughs> the vases don't seem to have anything in them either no that's the thing that gets me they're all empty vases sitting around the house just mm -hmm. waiting to explode he was the vase man <laughs> ace of vase is that <laughs> <Yeah>. anything <laughs> Sure, he saw the banshee, opened up his eyes, and then he bled through them and died. <laughs> I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Banshee bursts in through the window, uh, screams until his eyes start bleeding. Banshees have a very distinctive look in this. They're kind of Sindel from Mortal Kombat 3. Yeah, but just pure white hair. Yeah, doesn't she have white hair or is it gray? She's, she's got, like, the gray with the black streak in it. Oh, okay. Well, uh, yeah, they have uh, bright white, bleach white hair, uh, blue eyes, very cleavage -y. It's very important they're cleavage because Phoebe's going to turn into one, so they have to make it very sexy. <laughs> it's a specific Banshee costume, too. It's like that they all have this code like this is the banshee official work outfit you need yeah. to wear this you can't be a banshee unless you're wearing a, a cleavagey gray sack dress of mm -hmm. sorts <laughs> we get the opening credits we come back to another replacement song phoebe this is the next day she is still working on her book of shadows scrapbook page she's added another arrow she Yeah, she's added another arrow, and she says she's working on the section about Balthazar, which makes no sense, because this is right next to a page on Balthazar, so what is she even adding that's useful in the slightest? Circles. <laughs> Broken hearts. <laughs> Sad faces. She draws that little S that, you know, in middle school, you get so proud that it's you get, like, the six slashes, and then you connect them. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? The, like, gargoyles S. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everyone in middle school is like, hell yeah, I can do the S. <laughs> uh, so uh, Prue and her pigtails comes in. Uh, and she's got, like, these little leather things to hold her pigtails on. It's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. She's worried about Phoebe. And Phoebe's like, Piper's still in the basement. And they're basically just doing the same scene they did before. <laughs> yep. Uh, Prue's like, hey, there's a news story uh, about the um, noise complaints in our neighborhood last night. There was like way more than usual. Oh, and also a man was murdered. <laughs> Phoebe and cannot hold back her disgust at this. Like, can you not, Prue? You and your caring. Can you get off the show? <laughs> she literally goes, do you mind? <laughs> <laughs> Does not care. Uh, and until she figures a way to turn this into something about her, then she starts caring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's because um, she, when she's touching the page, uh, she gets this vision of a girl in a phone booth getting killed, as well as some stuff about the old man, I think. Uh, and she decides that she's going to summon Cole 
and kill him because she got the vision while she was holding his page. So that means Cole did it. <laughs> Cole did it. Uh, Prue, uh, she's continuing with the dog puns to foreshadow what's going on. She says, you're barking up the wrong demon. <laughs> <laughs> Prue, I can do this with or without you. <laughs> <laughs> She's just so pissed off. Like, no, it's Carl. We gotta go kill Carl right now. (laughs) This is when she sifts through the page and we get a great freeze frame of the entirety of Cole's page. Yep. (laughs) So here's the, the, here's what Phoebe wrote about Cole. Cole's human form. Two arrows pointing at a picture. Cole likes walks in the park. Jazz, fine wine. He's ticklish. Toes and waist, especially. <laughs> He's an excellent salsa dancer, pretends otherwise. He likes steak medium rare and artichokes. <laughs> He's great in bed. Good stamina. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the section on Balthazar. Balthazar slash Cole Turner, born 1885. Father, Benjamin, human. Mother, Elizabeth, demon. Wow, brilliant. Brilliant, Phoebe. In in case they meet a guy who likes steaks medium rare and is good in bed, better watch out. That might be Cole. (laughs) We know how to beat him. Let's lure him into an acme trap with his steak medium rare and artichokes. Start tickling him until we can vanquish him. (laughs) We know his weakness. The The toast and waste especially. Get the tickle trunk, boys. <laughs> <laughs> the Balthazar page is right next to it. That's the one that's um in the uh the fancy calligraphy with the the drawing or painting or whatever. And that basically just says avoid this guy. So that's not really that useful either. Like neither of these things is going to help in this situation. <laughs> no, the Balthazar page looks more professional, but it is also useless. Yeah, can you imagine? Like someone in the future finds this page and they're like, we got to, we got to take Balthazar out. And then they're like, he's ticklish. I don't know. I guess so they start trying to tickle him. And then immediately they get their head like ripped out and their spine comes out. <laughs> <laughs> but he was ticklish. I thought this would help. <laughs> so stupid. Here's some more things about the layout that doesn't really make any sense. And they only do it this way because the plot doesn't make sense otherwise. She she flips the pages and we see that there's a banshee page between the Balthazar summary and the how to summon Balthazar page. Yeah, for no reason other than, like you said, it's because she's supposed to be touching it. And that's why she gets the flash. Yeah. Like, uh, so on one side, you have the, the Balthazar page. You turn it and there is the page about banshees. And then there's another page that I don't even know what this is. It's basically saying, if you got a crying baby on your hands and you want to <laughs> cast a spell to make that baby stop crying, maybe don't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sometimes babies got to cry is how that ends. There's no, it's not like there's a spell. It's not like there's much advice other than like, be a good mom. Don't mm-hmm. cast a spell. And you know Piper fucking did it. You oh, know yeah. Piper was casting spells all over her kids. Get them to shut up. <laughs> Piper blew that page up, I'm sure, later. <laughs> and then after that, it's like, how to summon Balthazar. So why wouldn't you put how to summon Balthazar behind the Balthazar page? They don't care about you ever finding anything in this book. <laughs> why the hell did you do that? Uh. So anyway, um... Cole is in the underworld, I think, some sort of cave set. Uh, he's casting a spell by some candles and a black robe. I'm not sure they explain what spell he's casting. Presumably he's up to no good. <laughs> uh, that's when he's uh, summoned by the charmed idiots. <laughs> <laughs> he starts to fart into their living room. There's a little cloud like <laughs> like he's starting to go in there. He's like, no, I don't want to go in there. Uh, but he, t- he shifts to his uh, Balthazar demon form. And that's how he stays where he is. He's stronger in his demon form. So Prue's like, how about let's not do this and investigate the victims? <laughs> let's not bother with this cool shit. Well, I do like that they were going to summon him and hide behind a table. Yeah, this was going to help. <laughs> You'll never get us behind this table. <laughs> <Dead>. <laughs> 
Yeah, so Prue's like, let's investigate these victims. Also, let's leave Piper at the house because she could explode us. So <laughs> <laughs> let's not bother with her today. Um, that's so that they can have a seamless transition to uh, Piper listening to some tapes and meditating in her room. I guess it would be a CD at this point. She's listening to a CD. No, they show there's tapes on it. There's tapes? Yeah, there's tapes. Oh, okay. On. I guess we're still in tape stage. I was like, oh no, am I sounding old at this point? No, they show that there's tape holders right on the front of her boombox. Okay, so she's listening to tapes on her boombox, booming out this meditation. <laughs> boosh, 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 boosh. <laughs> Why isn't it relaxing me? <laughs> Uh, Leo orbs in, and it's exploding time! <laughs> <laughs> Blows up her uh, recorder or tape player. <laughs> She's like, you're supposed to knock, not orb! <laughs> Leo! This is, they haven't even gone on their honeymoon yet, and she's already, knock, not orb! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leo, you fuck up! <laughs> Yo, I see only good things coming for this marriage. <laughs> you still have time, Leo. <laughs> this is, okay, if I can give them some credit, I think this is somewhat of a touching scene. Um, she's worried she's going to blow him up. She's worried about controlling her powers. And he's like, look, I'm going to be there for you. Like, <laughs> I'm your husband. I'm going to I'm here to support you. And she's like, you should be here. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how you know it's still earlier, earlier. No. <laughs> Not mm -hmm. earliest, but, you know, she still cares about him a bit, though there's a line yeah. that would say otherwise later. But at this <laughs> point, they have a kind of loving scene, which sets it apart from later charms. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you can tell they still care about each other. Um, she's being acerbic about stuff, but um, she is worried about her husband. He's being supportive. She's reali realizing that she has someone there for her to help her in these situations. And... Um, he calls her, this was really funny, the strongest, most capable person that he knows. <laughs> He's a fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> you must be kidding, aren't you? They, uh, they lie on the bed together. It's cute. Let's ship them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's ship that husband and wife. <laughs> Leo and Piper forever. <laughs> Take that neighbor, Dan. <laughs> oh, man. You've gone missing forever. <laughs> we know what happened to neighbor Dan Ciro got him yeah <laughs> melts his face <laughs> Prue and Phoebe are at the crime scene where that old man died they're posing as specialists uh, apparently Daryl lied to this rando cop about them saying yeah these are some specialists let them in this feels very much like it was scripted to be Daryl and they didn't have Dorian Gregory for this episode for whatever reason. Yeah, because there's another point, too, where there's like, oh, hi, Daryl, on the phone. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what was he busy with? I, should, I don't mean to be, like, <laughs> insulting Dorian Gregory, but it kind of feels like he's the most unlikely too busy to be on this show person. <laughs> to be in the background of another Star Trek episode. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, they were trying to revive Baywatch Nights. <laughs> I don't know, maybe he had a family thing going on. Who knows? <laughs> we saw you in the background of that next generation. We need you to be in the background of what we got going on right now. Same character. <laughs> you think maybe they called him and he's like, yeah, maybe I'll try and pencil you in. I don't know, I'm kind of busy in my schedule chart. <laughs> and they're like, eh! <laughs> Yeah, oh, the cop also uh, details some more stuff about the crime. He says that the old man drowned in his own blood. <laughs> All of his blood vessels burst simultaneously. <laughs> this cop does not give a shit. No. He's like, are you this, those psychics that he was working with? And they're like, no. He's like, are you feds? <laughs> one point phoebe just gets tired because actually we're witches and i think my yeah. ex-boyfriend did this i'm i'm gonna vanquish him he goes i'm leaving the episode and he walks yeah, he's out like, yeah whatever <laughs> yeah yeah cool <laughs> cool beans i'm gonna leave <laughs> i forget exactly how it goes after that but basically prue's like you're an idiot <laughs> <laughs> uh so cole's in the underworld he's talking to some other demon just named alchemist yeah. More of the clever naming on Charmed. <laughs> Guy was sort of like discount Tobin Bell a little. Yeah, I could see that. 
Cole's basically like, they were going to summon me to vanquish me. I don't want that to happen. Um, I'm most vulnerable as a human, so um, I want to fully revert to my demonic side. I thought that he was suppressing his human side, so therefore he would just be Demon Balthazar all the time. But that doesn't seem to be the case, because he just looks like Cole. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> They're like altering his blood in some way. I remember there was some line in a in an earlier episode about how when he's weaker in his human form and it takes like he, he has to work to to stay in his human form mm -hmm. as Cole. So there's no reason why he wouldn't just stay Balthazar all the time and then not get killed. Alchemist is an idiot. I just don't understand, like, why he stays as Cole. What's the important thing other than we want to see Julian McMahon and not the other guy in the demon makeup? He's in the opening credits at this point. We've got to see him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it turns out that Al Alchemist is, um, he's also a love advice columnist. Because <laughs> he's like, you might become immune to her potion, but not her pull. Girl, you got it bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Alchemist is way better than Ask Me. <laughs> yeah, that mermaid saw a rival billboard <laughs> all glowing. Oh, like, Ask Alchemist, maybe. <laughs> he was just busy that day, though. He was hanging out with Dorian Gregory. They were having a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Let's invite Margoyle. Let's not. I don't know about that Margoyle guy. He's always talking about the Smofs. <laughs> I just can't look him. <laughs> So yeah, he uh, he agrees to do this thing for Cole, and he's like, mm, girlfriend, look inside yourself, I'll do it, but <laughs> this is something you gotta look in your heart for. So um, <laughs> he cuts his arm and then does like a bad lightning effect on him, like, <laughs> yeah. that had to be one of the effects they redid for the HD transfer too, so they had to like recreate the shitty 90s, <laughs> early 2000s lightning effect. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looked that bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Phoebe and Prue are in the living room. Phoebe is still convinced it's Cole because uh, she was touching his page. And then that's when Prue points out the banshee sections on the back. It's probably this. <laughs> this seems to kind of fit more. No, it's about me. Don't take this away, Prue. <laughs> it's all about me. <laughs> Don't make me kill you in the next episode. How many pages of the Book of Shadows do you think Phoebe filled up later with just articles from her column, like, glued into the pages. <laughs> I'm forgetting the name of any of the guys she went out with. Like, And this is Nick Lachey. <laughs> Watch out for him, folks. <laughs> he will write your column poorly. <laughs> he puts basketball hoops in your offices. <laughs> Leo comes down the stairs and he senses there's a need for some exposition. <laughs> And he's like, a banshee's a demon who feeds on the souls of people in great pain. He's just quoting almost verbatim the book, but he mm -hmm. has nothing else to do. So he's just like, hey, hey, I can tell you what's in there. I can tell you what banshees are. He gets some more useful info, too, later from the elders. But it's like, why wasn't that in the book? Yeah, that would have been helpful, but it didn't. Maybe it was. We didn't read the whole page. But either way, they no, didn't. I he finds the it out page. from the elders. It wasn't on there. Or did you? Yeah. Yeah. What did it say? <laughs> I don't remember everything, but it didn't say anything about what they are. <laughs> said banshees, yo. <laughs> <laughs> banshees. They scream a lot. Kind of annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so he says that they hunt for victims uh, with a call that's beyond the reach of human ears. Like when they're about to die, like it starts, it turns into a scream that you can hear. But otherwise, um, it's a call that uh, humans can't hear. Bugs dogs. Yeah, it bugs dogs, basically, so they can write Prue out of the episode. <laughs> Prue says to Phoebe smugly, Looks like it's not Cole after all. <laughs> <laughs> um, they don't have a spell to vanquish the Banshee. Wouldn't have that wouldn't have that been helpful if that was in the book, but no. Um yeah. but there is a spell to track the the Banshee. Uh it doesn't say what it does. Again, would have been helpful to know, but that book is just like just a bunch of useless information. Yeah. Uh, the girls cast a spell on Prue, and she turns into a dog. <laughs> what were they trying to cast? They were trying to tr cast a tracking spell, and dogs can track the... They can hear banshees and track them, so that's why she turns into a dog. <laughs> All right. <laughs> who let the Prue out? Who? 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 <laughs> that's the song. Eh... <laughs> uh. What was it? Was the song at the um, the end of 102 Dalmatians? 
was the song in the, that was like big around that. I don't remember. I'm gonna look it up right now. It's not gonna be worth it. Yeah, <laughs> dig a dig a dog, dig a dig a dog. Oh, <laughs> you dog, you. <laughs> That's what they should have played. Yeah. <laughs> But if they had played it, it would have been replaced on the one we watched. Yeah, that's true. It would have been the, like, off-brand version. Like, they'd be like, Prue is a dog, Prue is a dog. I've uh, got a dog going on, a dog going on. <laughs> We're acting as if any of the replacement songs have anything to... They're usually just generic-ass pop shit <laughs> they've yeah. thrown in. There was one that they replaced in here. It sounded like a sitcom sting going yeah. from a nut one scene to the next. It was really funny. <laughs> Prue immediately hides under the bed from her horrible sisters. <laughs> 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 I will admit, um, very cute dog. Mm -hmm. It is so cute. It's like a little uh, white husky looking dog. Some sort of husky mix with blue eyes. Really cute. Mm -hmm. uh... Too cute for charmed. <laughs> I just wanted to pat the dog. <laughs> Piper's like, oh, this is unusual. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> and she's like holding out her hands when she does it. And Phoebe's like, keep your hands in your pockets. Explodey. <laughs> Leo explains what happened. Like, it's like, well, she can hear the Banshee's call. So now she can track the Banshee. Like, Thanks, exposition, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Phoebe has trouble getting her out from under the bed. And um, she's like, will you do it for an innocent snack? <laughs> <laughs> Shows why Prue's better than most of them. <laughs> Even, Even as, as a, a dog, she's like, oh yeah, innocents are in trouble. Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll try and help people. So, mm. <laughs> and we see where the other ones are going to be going to. <sighs> do we really have to help innocents? <laughs> she was the dog, but her sisters were the bitches. Oh! Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, Phoebe and Piper are commenting that Prue is a pretty dog, much like I just did. <laughs> Piper's like, yeah, what'd you expect? <laughs> uh, Leo snarkily says he expected a Doberman. <laughs> Why is he being all like, oh, Doberman? <laughs> Prue growls and barks at him. <laughs> I don't know why he, why is he being mean all of a sudden? <laughs> I don't know why that's mean, but it appears to be mean because the way that she reacts. <laughs> yeah, being mean to Dobermans, being mean to Prue. Why are they all angry? Uh, but she uh, she growls and barks at him, and Piper tells him to watch his orbs. <laughs> she's gonna, bite she's his gonna balls be crushing off. them later. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be the one to destroy your orbs. Even at this point, they're threatening to tear his balls off. Like Leo, <laughs> get out! <laughs> it's like I know you still see love in her at this point, but it's fading fast, man. <laughs> Now that she's got you caught in a marriage before she gets pregnant, you still have time. You, you still aren't tied that much to her, right? <laughs> we don't want to need your stupid kids that want to bang their aunts. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say, if I haven't said on this podcast, every single comment I get now on my season six video is saying, Ugh, obviously Chris lied about sweet sleeping with his aunt. And no, that's wrong. You are wrong. The way that it was Jenny McCarthy, right? She was the one that he said he slept with. I believe so. Yeah. Whichever one he said, I believe it was Jenny McCarthy. I remember distinctly. <laughs> she looks nervous and backs away, says nothing to save her life from her sisters. She could have easily said he's lying. Even if she was lying about it, she could have said it. But she doesn't. She doesn't say anything, which clearly indicates something happened. And if that was not the intention, it probably wasn't the intention. But if it was not the intention, the execution clearly indicates something happened. He slept with his aunt. And even if you go with, he lied. <laughs> he is still lying and saying that he slept with his aunt. <laughs> Even if you say that he lied, he is still lying about sleeping with his aunt, which is bad. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> All this will be explored on the spinoff, The Chris Show. No, we will never get a Chris Show. <laughs> it's coming any day. I will rip Leo's balls off before we get a, a Chris Show. You mean you'll rip someone's <laughs> orbs off. I'll rip his orbs out. <laughs> 
orb him into space. <laughs> anyway, Prue Dog <gasps> chases Kit into the kitchen. They're breaking a bunch of stuff. Everyone has glass everywhere. Yeah. I expected there to be a glass table at this point. Like, there was more glass than anyone <laughs> ever owned in any other episode. Just psh, psh, even when the Banshees aren't around. Just <laughs> glass everywhere. Yeah. I feel like they did have glass tables later, didn't they? If they did, they're idiots. Because, like, honestly... Yeah, I mean, that's what you buy them for, is for someone to fall through. You just get the cheap stuff from the thrift store, like, cheap plywood tables at this point, because it's just going to get broken. Mm -hmm. Imagine if that's what they're hiding from Cole earlier, a glass table. <laughs> it would have been even dumber than the wood table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see them, like, hiding underneath it, and you can see them from the <laughs> other side. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> Piper comes in and scolds Prue. She's like, bad Prue, bad! <laughs> <laughs> she growls at her. Leo is scared of Prue. Mm -hmm. He seems more terrified of her than he is of his wife, who blows him up on the reg. <laughs> is this something we never knew about Leo? He's scared of dogs? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> this seems to be a thing. I can't think of other instances where he's been around a dog, but... <laughs> yeah. But he is scared of Prue. He's scared of his orbs getting torn off. <laughs> he says he's going to check with the elders. Confirmed. He just says that to get out of situations. I'll check with the elders. Bye. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Piper's like, um, well, what do we do if the Banshee shows up? And he's like, well, you blew up the last demon you fought, didn't you? <laughs> just do that. <laughs> he says that like with the quiver. Like he's terrified of Prue, too. <laughs> he, he is shaken. <laughs> He is traumatized. Something happened between him and a dog or some sort of testicular trauma has happened to him where he's mm -hmm. like, never again. Cannot with this. But, you know, if it had happened, um, they probably wouldn't have their terror twin dictator children. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it would have been for saying, the best. Yeah. yeah, Prue could have stopped this all <laughs> before it started. <laughs> <laughs> Prue runs away and... Uh, they think that she's heard the banshee, but really, uh, she just has to take a shit. <laughs> it's funny. This is now two episodes uh, involving Prue and dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite as good as mortality morality bites, but um. <laughs> I was surprised they had like a a bag to pick up the dog poop with them. Like that's. Yeah. Remarkably responsible, especially given the charmed ones. But why did they already have those too? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I'm gonna can I'm gonna headcanon this. Okay. After morality bites, where they try to magic the dog poo and then they have to their hubris sends them to the future and Phoebe's burned at the stake, they're like, <laughs> never again will we use magic on dog shit. We must have pooper scoopers and dog bags mm -hmm. at all times. And yet, they do seem to forget that in this episode, because um, they, they fight over who gets to clean up the poo, uh, but then they hear the dogs barking and then just toss the bag aside. They yeah. litter and don't clean up the poo. Yeah, so instead of cleaning up the shit, they made it worse by tossing the bag. It could not have been a worse outcome. <laughs> they need to be sent to the future again to learn this lesson. <laughs> yeah, it's Phoebe who tosses it, because of course it is. Oh, of course, it's Phoebe. <laughs> Cole did it. I don't have to clean up. <laughs> if it wasn't for Cole, I wouldn't have littered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How could Cole do this? <laughs> See her crying over the dog shit in the bag litter. <laughs> oh, Cole. <laughs> uh, so there's a girl crying in a phone booth. This is who Phoebe saw in her vision. Um, I think she's had like a breakup or something. Something where she's very upset and in a lot of pain. Uh, the Banshee shows up, shatters the phone booth. Prue Dog tackles the shit out of her. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those back alley phone booths, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. The girl runs away. Uh, the Banshee tries to go after her, um, but they fight with her for a while. She screams at Phoebe with a closed mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Piper tries to blow her up and misses. Then the Banshee takes off and Prue Dog chases her. They end up losing track of both of them because they're idiots. <laughs> Phoebe just lays on the ground for a long time, overselling. Yeah, what happened? She just like tackles her and then like she's not even hurt or anything. She's like, oh, 
Yeah. <laughs> I have to stay on the ground. Oh, I'm hurt the worst because um, of coal. <laughs> uh, Prue Dog <gasps> chases the banshee and gets hit by a car. <laughs> <Tee>. <laughs> Pretty good. Poor dog. <laughs> If only it was Phoebe that was hit by a car. It'd be pretty good. Yeah, if it was Phoebe, I had no sympathy. <laughs> She'd be like, yeah, back up over. <laughs> if it was Phoebe, too, it'd be like a dog, but it would have Phoebe's head on it. Because, like, <laughs> we need to see Phoebe. <laughs> it'd be like Mars Attacks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> And now I'm a dog. It's all about me. <laughs> bark, 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 bark. <laughs> I can still do my column. Nick Lachey isn't going to be running my column just because I'm a dog. <laughs> uh, Prue and Phoebe are at the house. Um, they're uh, trying to figure out where Prue is uh, by uh, looking. Uh, they're like looking for numbers for animal shelters and stuff. Uh, sh- uh Phoebe's on the phone with Daryl, and she's like, Yeah, I know you can't put an APB out on a dog, but tell the other cops to look for her at least. <laughs> Stupid oh, Daryl. Oh, man. This doesn't have anything to do with anything. Never comes into play. <laughs> no. Just trying to convince us that Daryl exists. <laughs> but for once, it is all about Phoebe. <laughs> Piper is like, That banshee was pretty focused on you, despite me trying to blow her up and everything. I think you could be the next victim, because you're in great pain. Maybe she means she's a great pain in the ass. <laughs> that would be more accurate. <laughs> but all of a sudden, Phoebe doesn't want to focus on Cole. She's like, nah, it's not about Cole now. I'm going to cast a tracking spell on myself, turn myself into a dog so we can go find the pro and all that. <laughs> Phoebe just loves being contrarian. Yeah, just loves arguing and bitching about stuff. <laughs> Um, but really, she wants to go to the attic so she can cry over Cole's Sears portrait. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your tears. Yeah, so there's actually a shot of a tear falling onto his smiling face. Yes. <laughs> it is wonderful. <laughs> this episode is a must watch just for that. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's up there with that scene in Torchwood where... um she cries her on face? her pizza. Yeah, the crying when the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is when Leo shows up, and um, he says that yeah, um, I found out from the elders, banshees are former witches, and uh, their screams turn other witches into banshees. Uh, that's when they hear uh, Phoebe. Uh, their screamings. Their. That's when they hear screamings in the attic. They hear screamings. Um, <laughs> their screamings. That's when they hear screams in the attic, and uh, Phoebe is being attacked by the Banshee. Uh, she screams a bunch more at Phoebe. I guess she didn't put enough stink on the first scream. She's got to scream some more. <laughs> yeah, scream, fill, scream bar, like, had to be filled up to a certain point to get Phoebe to max out and go full Banshee. Yeah. Piper and Leo show up in the attic, and Piper finally manages to blow up the Banshee because her part of the thing is over. I didn't believe that Banshee was really dead first, and then it's just like, oh, I guess that's the end of that one. No, because it's all about Phoebe now. They can't yeah. focus on that. <laughs> she blows her up and she shatters like glass. <laughs> mm-hmm. Turns into a little glass effect. And then and like, Piper. Piper's like really sad she's like, that was a witch yeah. And I had yeah. to kill her, and like I don't know how she turned into this banshee, but it was probably not her fault, just like my sister's. And no, she, there's nothing like that. Yeah. She spits she ex- on the corpse, and they move on. She expresses her sadness by saying, "Shut her up." Yeah, <laughs> that's the only acknowledgement. End of story for that banshee. <laughs> I hope that her like she has a sister too, like a witch sister, and she came back to try and kill them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! Anyway, so yeah, now it's about Phoebe, because Phoebe turns into a banshee. She's got the white hair, the blue eyes, the cleavage. And she starts making an annoying noise, and it's like, how do you tell the difference between this and regular (laughs) Phoebe? (laughs) Uh Uh-oh, says Piper. Time to blow her up. (laughs) 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 Ruh-roh. See, that Um, goes in with the dog theme. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Uh, time to get the wire work out. She tosses Piper and Leo aside. <laughs> and she goes screaming out the window. This is a typical night for Phoebe. <laughs> screaming and looking for men to destroy. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Leo asks if Piper is okay. He's pretty concerned about her, uh, but she's just caught up in complaining. Like, no, I'm not okay. <laughs> All this shit's going on and my sisters are dogs and banshees and shit. And then she, like, accidentally blows up Grams' sewing machine. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Grams. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid grandma ghost. I hope her ghost came and cried over the remains of her sewing machine. <laughs> This wouldn't have happened if Leo hadn't, this stupid man hadn't upset her. (laughs) Kills Leo. (laughs) That's for my sewing machine. It's around here, too, where, like, Leo says he's worried about them both getting killed, right? And that's when she says, like, you're already dead. Yeah, I think it's around that time. Like, she's like, you're dead anyway. What does it matter? (laughs) It's, like, kind of the opposite of their touching scene earlier. It's like, (laughs) ah. Uh, this is when also, also when Leo decides to very late tell the important information. He's like, oh, yeah, if Phoebe kills someone, she stays a banshee forever. Yeah. Yeah, Piper's like, I don't know if I can do this alone. She's not really trusting herself at this point. And Leo's like, don't worry, I'm here for you. And she apologizes. She's like, sorry, I'm freaking out about this. What's going on? Yeah, it's so weird. And it's how you can tell this is middle charm. You got like this weird still human Piper, but the piper we'd all come to know and fear showing up every once in a while she's like i'm sorry i didn't kill you sooner (laughs) bloody leo chunks (laughs) fatality (laughs) fatality uh so uh prue dog (gasps) is having an adventure (laughs) she's uh at uh, the house of the driver who hit her uh, he's on the phone. It turns out he's a journalist. Uh, he's explaining to whoever he's talking to uh, that he's supposed to watch this dog uh, until the dog feels better. So I guess she's not horribly injured, just bruised or something, like needs to rest up. Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, the the dog doesn't have a collar. M- maybe I should write an article about irresponsible pet owners and make them feel like dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We also get some POV shots from Prue Dog, her visions in black and white. Sure. Kind of interesting. The second um, animal POV shot, but the kid POV shots were not black and white. Cats see in color, dogs don't. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Interesting. (laughs) Mm. Uh, Take note, the the charmed wiki, if it's not in there, put it in. (laughs) Banshee Phoebe is sneaking around looking for victims so she can blame it on Cole. Uh, she finds a lady in a parking lot, uh, but a guy shows up and she's really pissed off about it. <laughs> <laughs> then we come back to the driver guy giving um, Prue Dog a beer. <laughs> it's like, drink up, dog. I don't know. Is this really responsible to be giving this dog a beer? He's like, yeah, you like the imported stuff, don't you? <laughs> this is their first date. They'll go on their second one at the end of the episode. <laughs> Was he like um, Doug or Bob McKenzie? Like, just giving the dog a beer? <laughs> yeah. The dog's gonna have a Superman cape and fly around after it's drunk enough. <laughs> when he run- when Prue runs out the door, just like, take off, you hoser! <laughs> <laughs> take off to the Great White North, eh? <laughs> I want to know more about this guy, but unfortunately, we uh, I don't think he shows up again. <laughs> Unless, I don't know. I've been surprised before. (laughs) (laughs) So she hears a banshee Phoebe screaming about the the disappointment of not killing that lady. Uh, So she barks a bunch until he lets her out and he's surprised that she runs away. How would he not know? This dog ran in front of his car and he's like, hey, and apparently lost track of her. So he's a big idiot. Yep. She drunkenly saunters out. Somehow drunk, (laughs) she's able to get out of there. (laughs) He can't find her. Uh, Gotta kill Phoebe. So at the house, uh, Piper has decided to summon Cole for some reason. <laughs> um, Leo's like, hey, the last time he was here, he killed a witch. Maybe this is a bad idea. And she's like, I got a, a vanquishing potion. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when uh, when like he's like, well, what if what if he blows us up first? And he, she's like, ah, you're dead anyway. Whatever. <laughs> Who cares what happens to you? <laughs> My husband. <laughs> Apparently, she's got very flawed logic here. She's like, well, if Cole finds Phoebe, uh, he can eliminate her pain so she'll turn back into normal Phoebe. How 
will Cole eliminate her pain? <laughs> By killing he's her? Pr- he's pretty much the source of the pain at this point. He's the source of all pain right now. Um, it seems like a bad idea. It sounds like Piper wants Phoebe to die, really. Maybe. <laughs> Then I'll be the youngest, I'll be the baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, She says, because Leo's like, well, how are you sure that this is, he's going to say he loves her and like fix all of this? And she's like, feelings like theirs don't go away. <laughs> <laughs> this stupid Cole Phoebe love of all time. <laughs> we know how that turned out. Yeah. Good one, Piper. <laughs> Their feelings are stronger than mine, person. person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna see that strong feeling about you later. <laughs> I'm gonna smash your stupid frozen corpse. <laughs> um, this doesn't make sense either. So Piper uses the spell and it summons Cole easily, even more easily than before. Even though he could get away from them the first time around and he supposedly fortified his blood or whatever he did the whole kogan breathing technique after farting in a popcorn bag and now his blood's all fortified and he should be stronger she did the spell though and she said times five at the end of it (laughs) times infinity can't can't plus one yeah (laughs) um i don't know maybe because he was all smug and cocky about it he just let it happen maybe he just wanted to gloat a while (laughs) Well, well, well. Yeah. (laughs) So uh, she explains the situation, and it is kind of funny, because Cole's like, why should I care? (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I don't do good anymore. (laughs) This is hilarious. Like, come on! (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) I'm (laughs) bad now. (laughs) It's good to be bad. (laughs) See, updated my resume. Bad. Hey, good to be evil. <laughs> the like two big wolf on campus fans will remember that one. <laughs> By all the power of evil. <laughs> uh Piper pulls the UOS card. Come on, we, we we pulled favors for each other before. We've done stuff for you. And she's like, Well well if you if you won't do the if you won't do it because you owe us, I mean, you love each other. Your love's like all time love. Like you just tell her. Kiss the girl. Ah, oh, well, this isn't working. I'm gonna blow you off. I'm gonna make with you. <laughs> Not getting through to him. <laughs> Leo goes, uh, yeah, this ain't working. Throw the potion at him. <laughs> just like, yeah, sure, give him a big heads up that you're planning to throw a vanquished potion at him. <laughs> he just, but he doesn't care. He just lets it happen because he's protected himself. Somehow he's stronger demonically, but still looks like Cole. I guess. I don't know. It just farts around him and he laughs. <laughs> That's the power of Ask Alchemist. <laughs> An alchemist guy. He never shows up again, I bet. <laughs> Stupid alchemist. <laughs> I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> uh, there's gonna be like 50 credits for Ask Alchemist. Oh, whoa. <laughs> he was really important. What does the Charmed Wiki say about Alchemist? Oh my god! Alchemists, also known as Alchemist Demons. So apparently he went by Alchemist, but there's more than one. Uh, well, it's like his last name. <laughs> He's Alchemist Alchemist. <laughs> um, also, one of the Alchemists is... Uh... <laughs> I'm spacing on his name. The guy from The Office, Dwight. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Rain Wilson. Rain Wilson, yeah, he's an Alchemist. <laughs> Um, they're demons with the powers of transmutation. They possess dark magic and use metaphysical tools to turn one substance into another. They also possess some control over the dead. Powerful alchemists can even resurrect the dead. Rain Wilson in a silky shirt and Coyote Piper. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently he was the first appearance of an alchemist, so why is this guy just alchemist? Was he just using it as like a title, like Groppler? You know, like it's not really his first name. You couldn't handle my undivided attention. There's so many mysteries to ask Alchemist. <laughs> You'll have to write him and ask for his article. There is another Alchemist in, a, in another episode as well, according to the wiki. Um, death becomes them. <laughs> <laughs> Prue Dog shows up. And Piper calls her Prue and Cole's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Prue. 
<laughs> I think that's my favorite thing with Cole is anytime they turn into something stupid and he would show up because he's got his own shit going on. Like they're superheroes and he shows up like, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> what stupid thing are you doing this week? <laughs> <laughs> this is none of my business. <laughs> <laughs> orbs out yeah. or blinks out i think blink is the demon term <laughs> sure uh phoebe shows up and uh she tackles cole he morphs into his uh star wars episode one look <laughs> yeah and they both teleport away uh after the commercial leo wonders why prue dog is so bummed <laughs> what you bummed about champ <laughs> uh he, apparently he's over that fear it was just like a couple scene fear where he's terrified and now he's like hey champ what's going on yeah. <laughs> The dog gave Leo some biscuits, so now he's happy with the dog. <laughs> he got some Scooby snacks. <laughs> you want some white lighter snacks? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Piper's like, I can't help but think that this whole thing is my fault. <laughs> it is your fault! <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but think that this is slightly <laughs> my fault. <laughs> Listen, I didn't. Just because I did it, I mean. Isn't that something on The Simpsons, like Bart says, like, I can't help but feel like this is I'm responsible in some way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Prue is acting super annoying and barking a lot, and Piper yells at her. <laughs> Shut up, Prue! <laughs> um, but then they figure, like, oh, yeah, she's probably tracking Phoebe. I guess we should follow her. <laughs> this keeps happening. Like, they keep not remembering that the dog, she's a dog for that reason specifically. <laughs> yeah. Phoebe Banshee and Darth Idiot are having a slap fight in a mausoleum. <laughs> I forgot about Cole's stupid mausoleum hangout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, He's got like a mini fridge in the corner. <laughs> yeah. You know why they added that mausoleum. You know. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they proceed to have a Buffy Angelus touching scene <laughs> mm -hmm. where he's like, I just can't kill you. I love you too much. He must be under the influence of some other demon at this point. Like. Yeah. yeah, that is just a really good performance. No way that's true. Well, maybe he just knows how to like save his life. He's just like, I love you, Phoebe. Really? It turns back human. Psych! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all it takes. Just like, I love you. All right. Yeah. Turn back. <laughs> you brought up my favorite subject. Me. <laughs> it's not about me. Prue turns back into a human once she's not a banshee anymore, I guess. I guess she turns back. Anyway, so um, they have a touching Phoebe and Cole Buffy scene. Um, Cole says that, uh, like, he explains what happened with that witch. He, someone cast a spell on him. A wizard did it. A wizard did it. <laughs> and he's like, the, he's, <laughs> the guy did it because he knew that killing a witch would destroy your faith in me. And I guess he was right. <laughs> It ain't that hard to destroy her faith in him. No. He could have, like, stolen the last Twinkie and then, like, eh, <laughs> Carl. <laughs> she had her call him. All she'd have to do is have him write a letter to the editor. I don't think Ask Phoebe is that great. <sighs> I hate Carl. <laughs> the guy originally was like, hey, can you kill this witch? And he's like, I would do anything for love, but I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anyway, um, they're like, oh, I'll always love you, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then Cole says in the most melodramatic way, I guess that's a pain we'll both have to live with, as he blinks out smolderingly. <laughs> 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 Leo is with Piper and Prue, and he uh, orbs out to go get Phoebe, and um, Prue's like, <laughs> this is a comedy scene now. She's like, I have fleas. <laughs> But at least she got to meet a cute guy. <laughs> Piper's like, how did you meet a guy? <laughs> Wait, it feels like all of these traits transferred onto Phoebe more so, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, Phoebe was always looking for dates, too. I mean, they all kind of did until uh, Piper was with Leo. But like, I feel like it was m more so mm -hmm. after uh, Prue died than Phoebe was suddenly like, Dates, I tonight's dates. Yeah. Well, it's like with Prue's, it's, they don't make her whine about her love life forever. Like, she complains a bit, but it's not like she doesn't center her entire personality around it. That's the thing. Like, she, like, once there's, like, 
an innocent in trouble. She's not like, but what about my date? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, they play the sitcom music after that and uh, go to P3. Piper is serving some drinks to a, cu- a couple of creepy looking dudes. Yeah. Big old creep. Ew. The Ew. biggest creep I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> uh, Phoebe and Prue are also at the bar. Um, and Prue shows Piper the bill for the repair guy. <laughs> for all the stuff that was broken at their house. <laughs> I love Prue's look in this scene. She's got this like silky pink halter top and like butterfly clips in her hair and just glitter all over her face. <laughs> it's very good. Uh, turns out she's got a date with the guy who ran her over. <laughs> <laughs> she said like he put up posters to find her. So I guess to find the dog. And then like, what did she say to him though? Like, hey. You know that dog you were looking for? Well, listen to this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that worked out. <laughs> um, Phoebe thanks Piper uh, for helping out with that whole Cole thing. And she's like, I think I made a mistake giving up on Cole. He loves her. So there mu- he, he loves me. So there must still be good in him. Why? Why would him loving her mean anything about there still being good in him? Mm hmm. I don't know, but Piper's like, yeah, that's great, Phoebe, but I'm the only one working the bar, apparently, tonight. Can you help? (laughs) No. (laughs) No. I need to spend some me time. That's what you were doing the whole episode! (laughs) (laughs) Maybe that's why after um, Phoebe says, like, I can fix him, basically, we just pan over to, like, sad Piper to end. (laughs) What is she sad about? (laughs) That Phoebe's an idiot. (laughs) Yep, so that's the end of the episode. Mm. Phelan, who's your Margoyle? Your standout loser. My Margoyle is that creep who came to the bar. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) No, Uh, it's it's Phoebe because (laughs) of her scrapbook page of shadows. (laughs) She made that piece of crap with the Sears <laughs> portrait and their photo booth photos and talking about Cole being good and bad. <laughs> it's like, you are a waste of time for the future generations, Phoebe. <laughs> good thing you didn't throw this away. Maybe you should have. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You guys have polluted it by this point. It's garbage to anyone. You would get all the witches after you killed. <laughs> <laughs> trying to read your garbage notes in this stupid, useless book. <laughs> you spent the whole episode whining about yourself and you're only interested in saving people <laughs> when it had something to do with you. But you suck, Phoebe. <laughs> Allison, who was your Margoyle? My Margoyle is Cole. <laughs> For having that scrapbook page made about him. <laughs> Because <laughs> future generations are going to know all of these stupid details about him. They're going to know he's ticklish. They're going to know how he likes his steak. They're going to know how he is in bed. He dated this woman for how long? And this is all the information she could come up with on him <laughs> as as details, perhaps, to help them out. Like, his weaknesses, his wants, his desires. <clears throat> he's ticklish, especially around toes and waist. <laughs> <laughs> How embarrassing for him. She made him take these stupid photos. And the, <laughs> now that's on record. Yeah. It's in print. <laughs> it sucks to have that written about you, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like we were thinking the same thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're a uh, kindred spirit, Margoyles. A couple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Phelan, uh, what's your final assessment of Look Who's Barking? It's amusing, like said, it is like a transition from old charm to new charm. So it's like, it's weird because you see people still caring somewhat about things, but you also have like this big Femi thing going on, whining about herself, Piper still loving at times, but then also you're already dead. Who cares about you, Leo? It's a very <laughs> interesting mix. It's a funny enough episode, though. Yeah, I think, like, 
I probably would have enjoyed it a little more if it was an Air Bud scenario. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they <laughs> just Prudon. ran with the dog plot. <laughs> yeah, um, but it is kind of funny. Like, there is the Cole and Phoebe stuff, but it's a, a, in a very amusing way. Like, it doesn't make me mad. It's just silly. Yeah. And I think, like, the characters were at that point where you could still laugh, but you could still enjoy some stuff. And I do think there was still moments of sincerity in there you could see why leo and piper were married for instance like they had moments they were trying to show that they cared about each other and not just bitching yeah which honestly, is what it almost entirely became later yeah you forget about anything like that later on you're just like why why these two ever get together <laughs> it's um it's an episode that i i think is is fun enough. I do feel bad for Shannon Doherty as it being her penultimate episode because they didn't know or she didn't know that, she, that it was going to be her last episode, the next one. But um, but I do think All Hell Breaks Loose was a, a pretty good finale despite how it ended up turning out. So I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. This episode's fine. It's a silly turn into things episode. And that's the bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> as Femi said so. Because Femi said so. <laughs> I don't know what, but it's not Stone Cold Steve Austin, whoever I sounded like. <laughs> the Crusher. <laughs> Ask Alchemist. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, that'll do us. Do, um, <laughs> that'll do us. Uh, if you like, subscribed, or reviewed, and you didn't, I'm going to start over again. <laughs> if you haven't liked, subscribed, or reviewed, you should. But if you didn't, can't can't get fooled again. <laughs> hey, uh, you should like, subscribe, or review. Maybe leave us an iTunes review. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, wherever you're enjoying this podcast. <laughs> we're in an audio form at anchor.fm under Charm Rewind. <laughs> Sometimes we're articulate, sometimes we're not. You know where to go. <laughs> um, we're also on YouTube under youtube.com slash movie nights, the series. Uh, Phelan stuff is at youtube.com slash <laughs> Um We're on Patreon where you can participate in polls or see videos ahead of time. I'm on patreon.com slash movie nights. Phelan's at patreon.com slash Thanks to Peter Hunter for editing the podcast and doing the amazing theme song that we have. And uh, you can find him on Twitter at Pretor Hunter. You should also check out Riff Tracks the Game, which he helped produce. Pretty cool. Phelan, what hashtags? Hashtag that'll do us. <laughs> Hashtag if you like, subscribe, review, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag that creep at the bar. <laughs> If you guys see him, you'll know you'll know why we don't like him. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that'll do us, Charmanders. <laughs> I'll see you next time. <laughs>